Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the various functions of the piriformis muscle because depending on the location of the femur and the angle at the hip joint, the piriformis muscle can do completely different things. It can do, in fact, completely opposite things. We usually think of the pyrif uh, piriformis muscle as an external rotator of the hip. Um, however, if you flex the hip joint enough, then it actually becomes an internal rotator, which means that then in order to stretch it, you actually have to externally rotate, which is weird to think about because everybody thinks about the piriformis muscle as an, oh, it's an external rotator. It's part of the deep six. It's part of the external rotators of the hip. Well, if that were true at all the time, no matter what, then we would think that in order to stretch it, we'd have to internally rotate the hip. But then we find ourselves stretching in pigeon pose how does that make sense? So this is the video trying to explain that. Um, so I'm going to walk through the uh, a little anatomy quiz that I put on my Instagram and Facebook recently and a, uh, a little drawing that I made to explain this. And hopefully that helps you to understand how muscles totally change their uh, actions depending on where the joint is, um, uh, where the, the legs are, where the limbs are in space. So, uh, hey, before we get into it, though, please subscribe to this U, uh, YouTube channel and uh, like the video. It helps other people see it. And, it, you know, when I release future videos, you'll be more likely to see it as well. So, all right, let's get to it. So uh, for the anatomy quiz, which of these supine poses is not stretching the piriformis muscle? Well, um, the middle pose is kind of a classic piriformis, uh, piriformis stretch. I will, uh, if you're nitpicky here, um, I will tell you that B, the right hip joint is past 90 degrees of flexion. So this is our classic. Um, B is, uh, does stretch. Oh my gosh. Stretch. Okay, so B definitely does. That's like our classic piriformis stretch. And the reason is because the hip joint is way past uh, 90 degrees. The next one is um, C. So C is actually, so here's our hip joint. Here, let's pick a different color. Uh, so here's our hip joint, and we are adducted. We are adducted. And uh, that means that we are stretching the piriformis. And we are, perhaps more importantly, internally rotated. So this is what you would think of as a piriformis stretch if you just used your logic of like, all right, a piriformis is an external rotator. Therefore, in order to stretch it, we need to internally rotate it. So it turns out that letter C is actually an orthopedic test uh, for piriformis syndrome. Piriformis syndrome is basically where your piriformis muscle is entrapping your sciatic nerve. So it's um, this is a way of creating extra tension and compression. Uh, well, I should say compression of the sciatic nerve tension of the piriformis muscle um, so that we can irritate it and we can say, say oh, yeah, it's probably piriformis syndrome. So C uh, also does stretch it. Okay, now we've got this uh, supta baddha konasana where here's the hip joint and there's your angle and the hip is not flexed anywhere near 90 degrees and it's externally rotated. So the reason you might think that A is the correct answer is because if you think of your piriformis stretches as like your pigeon pose, um, like this pose right here, I know this is like a lay, a supine pigeon sort of thing. Well, if you think of that as your piriformis stretch, then you might be thinking, well, okay, so then I, for some reason, I need to externally rotate to stretch the piriformis. Fine, I'll externally rotate it and stretch the piriformis. And then you might think that A, because it shares some similarities with B, is stretching the piriformis. That's my, maybe that's what you would think if you answered, um, if you, if you thought that A was a piriformis stretch. It's not. 
it is not a piriformis stretch. Um, in A, the hip joint, again, is uh, less than 90 degrees of flexion, and it is externally rotated, which means that the piriformis does its normal job of external rotation. Therefore, the muscle is getting shorter in, um, in A. Therefore, A is our answer. It is not stretching the piriformis. So let's find out why. So I made a little drawing. And what we see in this drawing is three positions of the femur. So we've got our femur here, here, and here. And in the first one here, the hip joint is in neutral and the piriformis is an external rotator. In the second one here, the hip joint is approximately 90 degrees, uh, depending on the source, maybe a little bit less. But anyway, the point is that it's in that neutral territory where it's uh, gonna transition from an external rotator to an internal rotator, but there's a little area in there where it doesn't do any rotation at all. All it does is abduction. So that's like the middle ground. And then we've got our last uh, scenario here, which is that the femur is uh, flexed past 90 degrees. And when it is flexed past 90 degrees, it flips. It's totally the opposite. It's an internal rotator. So let's break that down just a little bit. Um, all right, so in neutral, here's what we've got. We've got our joint is right here. Um, I'm going to point out the joint um, axis on all of these. Let's just do them all at the, the same time. All right, so joint axis, joint axis, and then the third one, here's our joint axis. Okay, so in blue is our joint axis. I'll label that. Okay, so those are our joint Ax axes. There we go. Axes? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, then we've got our, let's do, I don't know, how about like red? Red will be easy to see. Then we've got our anchors, essentially, uh, our origin insertion, origin insertion. And therefore our line of pull There, there, and there. So these are our line of pull. Okay, and you can see that in the first example, the first example here, is uh, that the uh, line of pull is below the joint axis. So the line of pull here is below the joint axis, which is pictures in, in blue. And because of that, what's gonna happen is that it's going to pull on the greater trochanter and it's going to pull it around um, and to like towards the back side of the body, which results in external rotation of the hip. So here's your external rotation, okay? When the hip is in the second scenario, whoops, when the hip is in the second scenario here, the line of pull is directly on top of, so here's your line of pull, and it's directly on top of the joint axis. And because of that, it can't rotate it because what it's pulling on the, the uh, greater trochanter here, it can't go up and it can't go down. So it can't do that and it can't do that. So if it can't do either of those, then all it can do is pull it this way. And if you pull the um, greater trochanter this way, then the femur moves essentially out and around into A, B, Abduction, abduction, okay? However, when that greater trochanter, let's move on into the third scenario, when the greater trochanter right here is above the, the uh, joint axis, so here we are, here's our line of pull, and it's above the joint axis, again, pictured in blue, it has to pull the greater trochanter 
up. So it pulls the greater trochanter up. And if it pulls the greater trochanter up, then it rotates the femur internally. Cool. So it has to, it's all about where is this joint axis and then wh where is the thing that it's pulling on? Because the joint axis, the thing in blue, has to stay exactly where it is. It, it's fixed. It's fixed in space. But the greater trochanter is capable of moving. And so depending on where the trochanter is in relation to the joint, it's either going to go up or down or sideways. Cool? So in review, the, um, the first scenario is neutral. So here we go. This one is neutral, and uh, the action of the piriformis is external rotation. Therefore, in order to stretch the piriformis, when the hip joint is in neutral or a little bit flexed, you must internally rotate and adduct, adduct the, um, uh, the femur. The second scenario here is the uh, hip joint is approximately 90 degrees flexed. It cannot rotate at all, so your rotation doesn't matter here. And in order to stretch the piriformis, you would adduct because what the piriformis wants to do is it wants to abduct, abduct, okay? It wants to pull your leg out to the side. And then the last scenario, which is what we're all probably most common with, um, commonly aware of, is where the femur is flexed past 90 degrees. This would be like in pigeon, pigeon. Um, then uh, the line of pull is completely flipped because the femur is upside down. And now you will want to um, externally rotate the joint in order to stretch the piriformis because the piriformis wants to internally rotate the, uh, the femur. Cool. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, the last thing that I can show you is like on the real thing. So this might help you just get like a different image of it. So here in 90 degrees, the greater trochanter is in line with the axis. Whereas down here um, in neutral, the trochanter, which is that big knob on the side of that femur on the right side of your screen, that big knob is below the joint axis. And so it's going to externally rotate. It's going to pull that sucker backwards. Um, I can't show you this here, but just look how it goes up, 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 up. Now it's even with the joint axis, even with the joint axis, and then up, 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 up. If I were able to keep going, unfortunately this app doesn't let me do it, but if I were able to keep going, that greater trochanter, well, let's look at it from a different angle. Well, I can't, dang. Oh, well, um, it would, oh yes, I can, there we go. So you can see that as if I were to try to take this greater trochant or this femur and keep flexing it, keep flexing it, you're just flipping the femur upside down. And so then you're, if you're pulling on the trochanter, it's, it's like you're pulling it, you're still pulling it towards the backside of the body, but because the femur is flipped upside down, now it's going to be an internal rotator. Cool. So the same thing is going to happen like TFL is an internal rotator of the hip inflection and gluteus maximus. The superior fibers are also um, an internal rotator of the hip uh, in flexion. So that should hopefully explain how uh, muscles do totally different things based on the position of the joint and where your bones are in space. Um, if you have any questions, because this is a little complicated, I, I hope I made it simple um, in a way. There's, an, there's a joint, and then there's two things that a muscle pulls on. And if the muscle is pulling and that line that it's pulling in is below a joint, it's going to pull it in a certain way because the joint has to stay fixed. But if you get that line of pull above where the joint is, it pulls it in the totally different way. So I think that seeing it can wrap your mind around it. And I hope that explains some of the paradox of like, why is it that the piriformis, if it's an external rotator, why are we doing pigeon pose to stretch it? I call bullshit. Well, turns out it's actually like a biomechanical thing and ah, biomechanics, ah, gotta learn all these damn things. 
Well, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like uh, this video. Please subscribe to this channel so you get notifications when I release future videos. Please share this with your friends. And hey, this whole thing started with um, a, an anatomy quiz on my Instagram and Facebook and all that. And I've been doing these more uh, regularly recently. So if you want to just quiz yourself randomly, um, subscribe to my, or follow my Instagram or Facebook or whatever, follow me somewhere and then participate in those quizzes. Cause what I'm starting to do now is I'll put a quiz out. I'll put a little educational drawing out and then I'll have a video explaining it. And that should be enough that you actually get to learn something without just um, these little tidbits of random information. Okay. A little bit more focused this way. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.